E-Lessons from the book, 1 Million Followers, How I Built a Massive Social Following in 30 Days. One of the key lessons here is that paid media is essential, and I could not agree more with the author on this point. If you look at any Fortune 500 company, when they do marketing, they're going to throw tons of money at paid media and at advertising because that's one of the cheapest, most cost-effective ways of influencing a lot of people. Now, one of the key reasons that this is essential for scale is because organic just takes forever. You can publish content for years before you achieve any sort of critical success. So a lot of influencers are going to tell you, all you need to do is keep cranking out content, just keep publishing, just keep doing it. That's a very, very slow path to success. Now, if we look at a case study, Justin Bieber. One of the keys to his success was not just cranking out content, but really capitalizing on things that were already working. So what he did was he covered songs that were already popular. He capitalized on what was already working. He didn't do anything that was particularly innovative. And he was capitalizing on people on what people were already searching for. They're already going to be looking for these popular songs. They're already going to be looking for these popular artists. So if you go on YouTube or you go on social media and you just decide, I'm going to create something completely unique, people, something that people haven't seen before, well, they're not searching for it. There's no demand for that. And uh, that's why a lot of people fail when they try to build a social media following. So uh, what, what I've seen in the real world is I've, I've lived with these YouTube associates of mine, and they're generating about 80 million views for some of their top videos. And, and one of the reasons they're able to do it is because they're following trends and they're building, they're building videos around trends rather than just sort of saying, we're going to come up with something special and people are going to love it. Well, instead, let's look at what people love and create something around that. It's kind of a a market force where you're meeting the demand rather than trying to create demand for something that is a niche interest that a lot of people just really are not going to be that interested in. Now, another key piece of advice here is he doesn't want you to spend too much time on a single piece of content. So what I see a lot of the time when I'm working in marketing is a lot of people are perfectionists. And they'll spend years writing the perfect book, coming up with the perfect course, perfecting the perfect invention, getting it just right. And then they release it into the market and it's a complete flop. Very, very common problem. You see this with engineers, you see this with writers, you see it with inventors. The reason is because you don't really know what the market wants. You haven't tested the market. So instead what the author recommends is test many variations and make changes. That's going to be critical to growing quickly in social channels. Now, at the tactical creative level, uh, what you really need to focus on is getting a strong hook to catch and hold people's attention. So when you look at a lot of content in social media, what it is, is somebody going on and on about themselves. Hi, my name is Bill. I'm a director at so-and-so, blah, 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 blah. A huge introduction that nobody cares about. You see this all the time with webinars, and it, it can be very uh, irritating because it's not empathetic. It's not really appealing to what people are interested in. Instead, what you want to do is you want to start with a bang. Uh, a good example of this is this crazy advertisement from Squatty Potty showing a unicorn that's pooping. It's very attention-grabbing, keeps you interested, Keeps you engaged to listen further in the video to see what's about to happen next. The key to scaling a massive audience in the shortest possible time is an agile approach of producing, testing, and measuring how people are responding to your content in real time. So what that means is you're, you're putting out different types of content you're testing different variations, you're tweaking, and most importantly, you're pivoting based on the market feedback you're getting, based on what you're seeing in engagement rates, abandonment rates, uh, what people are sharing, what people are liking, and then you're able to switch the direction based on what the demand really is in the real world. And one of the big things that you're really aiming for is to create shareable viral content. So the kind of content that's going to appeal to a lot of people that it's that is going to encourage them to share it with others. So what is the key to success with shareable content? Well, you want to create something where people don't feel like they're being sold to. It doesn't feel like an 
advertisement or a sales pitch. You also want to touch them on an emotional level. What does that mean? What does emotional mean? It means feeling inspired, feeling connected, feeling like you want to laugh or you want to cry. And one way you can do that is by being vulnerable and honest. Talk about your deficiencies, talk about your failures, talk about your struggles in life. One YouTuber I follow, for example, who's a leader in marketing for uh, online courses and social media and YouTube, uh, he talks about his struggles with alcoholism and it makes him uh, more trustable. He seems more honest because he does that. You also want to give people stuff they haven't seen before. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean coming up with something radically different because we know that there are certain things that have high demand uh, through entertainment, through social media, certain key topics, things like health and fitness. But that doesn't mean you can't do it in some sort of unique way. So things like having an unexpected outcome in your video or unexpected timing or some sort of surprise twist. So for example, there was this viral recording of Ronaldo who's on the street behaving like a random busker. And then the, he surprises people at the end by revealing who he really is, this uh, all-star soccer player. Another key thing with creating this viral content is you don't wanna ask anything in return. Uh, you're not creating a viral video to get people to click it, to go buy your product, for example. They're not gonna go to your e-commerce store and buy something. They're not gonna go to your business to business page and become a lead to request a demo. Uh, really what you're trying to do is you're trying to create virality and you do that through things like entertaining emotional content. What you can do later is retarget those same people that engaged with your viral content to get them to take action. So you need a multi-step approach here. Don't expect that the viral video is directly gonna contribute to sales. You need some sort of funnel here, even if it's just a very basic funnel. So what could that look like? What could that funnel look like? Well, first you create some sort of viral curable content and that's the goal. That is the, the end purpose of it. And then you follow that up with content that's designed to inspire engagement, to get people to comment, to have a conversation, to like, to share, et cetera. And then you, and retarget again the people that did the engagement with some sort of hard call to action where you're trying to get them to sign up for your sales webinar or to request a demo or to buy your product on your e-commerce page. So we're separating out the measures of success, starting with first reach and shareability, second engagement, and then third, the actual hard metrics that we're looking for, which is people responding to the calls to action. Now, a good example of a nice viral piece of marketing would be the California Raisins. Look how crazy it is. Uh, it, it's, in, it, it's inspiring, it's creative, it's funny, uh, it stands out, it's distinctive, and it's the kind of thing people are gonna talk about and share. One of the keys to success is to pose questions to your audience. This is very good best practice when it comes to copywriting. It's also a very good habit when you're generating videos rhetorical questions, genuine questions, questions that sound as though they're one-on-one -on -one conversations, very, very effective. Where you see it often is with successful YouTubers who are gonna say, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Now, it sounds like a genuine request to hear what people have to say, to hear what their thoughts are, uh, but in actuality, they're really being kind of selfish because what they want is they want more comments on their video so that it's more likely to go viral, more likely to get picked up by the algorithm to see higher engagement rates. Now let's do a little deep dive on videos. Uh, some key things you wanna aim for. You wanna have hook within the first three to four seconds. So that's really the critical period when you need to capture people's attention. Uh, there's gonna be a high abandonment rate in those first five seconds of your video. So you, you have to capture their interest. You wanna use something exciting and interesting right away. Don't save it till the end. Too many people when they're writing or they're creating videos, they are trying to build up to a climax where the best stuff is safe for last. Don't do that. Start out with something very strong. You wanna be fast paced, you wanna be engaging. Another key thing you need to note is that high production value, so these videos that cost say $5,000 and up, aren't necessarily the ones that are gonna be the most shareable. So sometimes the most shareable videos are just cheap things that you create with uh, a few images and a slideshow that you create it using Canva. Another key thing is that telling a good story, which is often what these high production value videos are, uh, doesn't necessarily mean they're shareable. 
So there's a big difference between generating, say, a massive multi-million dollar Marvel movie style video versus something that people want to share, people something that people want to engage with. So um, one of the key things, too, is to keep your intros to a minimum. Too many people go on and on in the intros of their videos about who they are, what they're going to talk about. We'll just jump in and start giving something of value. Uh, I have an example of a dog here because I, I recently had to listen to a webinar where about four people introduced themselves by talking about their pet dog, and it just was completely irrelevant to the audience. Now, please bear with me as I go through a lot of tips that are specific to Instagram here. So one of the key things you need to keep in mind is that Instagram is not inherently a sharing platform the way that Facebook is. So that really changes the strategy that you're going to take. Uh, massive growth, therefore, is not as fast as it's going to be on Facebook because you're not going to get uh, those nice network effects that are generated through sharing. One of the keys to success with, success with Instagram is going to get featured on the Explore page. And another key to success is leveraging engagement groups. So uh, a lot of this is a bit vague, but we're going to go into a bit more detail later. But you need to create effective content. So have a content first mentality and then think about how to distribute that content through other accounts. And this is going to be the fastest way to grow. So look at people that have accounts that already have high engagement that already have massive followings and leverage them in a similar way that you're going to leverage advertising. So uh, one of the first steps you need to take is to identify pages or networks of pages that are going to allow you to publish your, your content on their accounts. These are known as meme accounts. These are going to fit into certain niches. So for example, uh, inspiration, fitness, food, comedy, etc. Look at the niches that are particularly successful on Instagram and see, do these map well uh, with the niche that you're in? Uh, so for example, if you're uh, going to go hardcore on higher education or business to business, uh, then you might want to think about committing more time towards LinkedIn uh, rather than something like Instagram. So what you can do is you can send direct messages to pages that are in your niche to ask them for their advertising rates or their promotion rates. And another thing to keep in mind is there are a lot of fake influencers on Instagram and on social media in general. Uh, so make sure you to run some tests to weed out accounts that have fake followers. In my personal experience, I, I ran into this problem with Twitter. Uh, but of course, you, you will likely run into it with Instagram as well. All right. So here's the formula for the fastest way to grow with Instagram. Number one is create highly engaging content that is valuable to other accounts and then distribute to as many channels as possible. So you're kind of thinking of your marketing strategy as a little less of direct to consumer and more going through distribution channels, which are these pages and these influencers that already have huge distribution networks. So if you think about it as though you were selling a physical product, well, you could go and try to sell your toothbrushes to individual consumers, or you could just try to get it in Walmart and then Walmart, Target, et cetera, will distribute it to millions of people. So that, that's one way to think about your Instagram strategy. So really what you're doing is you're influencing the influencers. And what you can do is you can have a circle of influencers. This is one of the keys to success with Instagram is have a, a group of influencers that you work with as essentially your, your distribution army. Another key thing is you don't want to get too attached to your content. You need to be willing to abandon routes that aren't working, abandon the types of content that aren't working. You need to have a test and learn mindset. And if you have a business profile, what you can do is you can go to the insights page to see uh, what posts are getting the most views, uh, to give you an idea of what kind of content to create in the future that has the highest potential uh, for virality for wide reach. Another key thing is with scale, you don't need to create everything yourself. You can rely on other creators. You can leverage content that's already trending on other pages. You can work with contractors through Fiverr, Upwork, et cetera. Let's get into the specifics about how the author was able to gain a million followers in just 30 days. The key lesson is that content is the critical factor, particularly the content message that's reflected in the headline. And one of the keys to success with coming up with that headline concept is to be very specific. An example where I was, had a lot of success was I had a headline, something to the effect of 
how to sell websites for $15,000 each. Now I could have just said how to sell expensive websites, how to sell more websites, how to get more money for your websites. But instead I was very, very specific. And I said how to achieve $15,000 in revenue per website sale. Now some of the technical things that he did to gain a million followers, he took short audio clips from podcast interviews and started slicing those up. And these interviews were ones that he held with partners and celebrities. So he's getting some leverage there from, from their brand, from their following. So he took those audio clips, converted them into videos using images, slideshows, or sometimes just stock video. And one particular approach that was effective for him was putting quotes on images and then distributing those through social media. And the niche that he was in was inspiration. So taking an inspiring quote and putting it on top of uh, perhaps a very famous inspiring leader, something to that effect. Another key thing here was he built his system with the concept of sharing on Facebook. So the idea was let's create content that people are going to want to share. Now, if you want to learn more about how to share things in a way that's going to make them go viral, you can look up the research that came out of the Wharton Business School through Jonah Berger. He wrote a book on virality. And uh, something to keep in mind is that some platforms are inherently more shareable, like Facebook, whereas on other channels, something like SEO and keyword optimization is going to be more effective. But you can really get that uh, strong exponential growth through Facebook and uh, networks that rely on social interaction. Okay, so some more details about what he did. Uh, he amplified his content with paid ads and he ran ads with different objectives. So one of the main objectives that he used was page likes, which is what he found particularly effective. And he found that he could pay less than 20 cents per like. Uh, so you can see the momentum that starts to be gained there when you achieve a substantial number of likes on your content. Another thing he did was he was able to acquire followers for a penny or less in countries such as India, but had to pay upwards of, uh, or as low as six to seven cents in, in more expensive geographies like the USA and the UK. And when he was doing this, when he was running the paid ads to generate followers, he never spent more than the suggested amount that Facebook suggests. Another thing that he did was he wasn't just leveraging paid media, but also leveraging pages that already had millions of followers and getting them to share his content uh, with audiences. And he had numerous pages sharing the content simultaneously as a way to kickstart the algorithm. So if a whole bunch of popular pages start sharing your content, then you're able to, then the algorithm is going to recognize that you're uh, something trending, you're something worthy of promotion. So he's able to catalyze effectiveness that way. Now, in running the ads, he had a hierarchy of considerations. So the first two objectives that he's considering are going to be the video view objective ads or post engagement. And then the second type to consider would be something like lead gen or website conversions. So you really need to think about, is your focus really virality and, and getting a lot of engagement, getting a big followership, or is it more about short-term e-commerce sales or business-to-business -business lead generation? And uh, the ad objectives you, you use are going to determine which is most effective. Uh, I would add here that your time frame is also very important here. So uh, if you need to generate short-term revenue, then you're probably going to focus a bit more here. Whereas, you're, whereas if you're invested in the long-term and becoming an influencer or becoming a, a sizable brand, then you'd probably want to start here and then worry about generating sales and revenue later. Now, let's talk about the different types of popular content that is likely to get shared first. And the one that he had a lot of success with was inspirational, motivational, and aspirational. People like sharing feel-good stories, and uh, inspirational ones are going to fit that mold perfectly. There's also political and new stuff. This is also often the opposite. It's very divisive. Uh, entertainment, comedic, pets. And another thing that I'm going to add here is that you should really know what topics are trending. Uh, I've commented a lot about my associates who have been hugely, wildly successful on YouTube, 80 million 
plus views on their videos. Uh, a lot of that has to do with looking at what's trending uh, rather than just coming up with stuff that's unique and piggybacking off that trend. Now, another way to do piggybacking is not just trend following, but also strategic alliances. This is something I talk a lot about in my courses, how you need to align yourself with people that have already have massive followings because then they're, they're going to amplify your effectiveness. So go where your audience already exists so you don't have to start from scratch. Another key thing is you don't necessarily need formal partnerships. So it's, it's going to get actually very cumbersome trying to establish big uh, partnerships because essentially you're going to need another sales force. It's called a business development team. It's going to reach out to potential partners. Now, one way to circumvent this that I personally use is a tool called Lead Enforce. What Lead Enforce is going to allow you to do is to advertise on Facebook to people's followers, to influencers' followers, without needing to talk to the influencer at all. A very effective tool. Another key thing you can do is you can just write an article for a bigger blog. So one, for example, I looked at is HubSpot. HubSpot is very clearly le laid out what types of content they want to publish. There's a formal application process, so it's pretty straightforward. You can also just reach out to popular bloggers and say, hey, I want to contribute free content. Here are my credentials. Here's an idea I have or a few ideas that I have. Uh, do any of these interest you? Another key thing is to identify who is influential in your industry. Personally, I recommend using the tool SparkToro. It's free. There, there is a premium version, but it's a quick, easy way of finding out who the influencers are and who the top publications, podcasters, et cetera, are. Another key thing is to leverage other people's content. You don't necessarily need to come up with stuff from scratch. You can use things like quotations from famous people rather than coming up with your own. One of his key learnings was that you want to build engagement in less expensive markets first. So when I run ads globally in places like India, for example, I'm able to generate tons of likes and engagement. Same thing in parts of Africa. So if social proof is what you're going for, you can start there uh, before you start moving into the more expensive, highly developed markets. Next, we're going to get into some specifics on YouTube. There are some easy benchmarks here we can follow when it comes to YouTube. The first is that you need 20,000 subscribers to get noticed by the algorithm, 50,000 subscribers to start making real money, and 100,000 subscribers to really get brands to notice you. Now, from my experience, this isn't actually true. I was getting $5,000 brand deals with way less than 20,000 subscribers, so I, I wasn't even at this early benchmark here. The reason was because the niche that I'm in, I'm reviewing business software, I teach marketing to marketers, I have a very lucrative audience that I'm appealing to, executives, etc. So I, I'm able to be a, a paid influencer at a very low threshold. But if you're more mass market and you're putting out funny prank videos or something like that, you're going to need a much bigger audience to do that. If you're in something like personal finance, where the CPMs are quite high, then you probably don't need this many subscribers to be successful. So these are just general benchmarks. Another thing to keep in mind with YouTube is that it's not inherently shareable the way that Facebook is. And uh, the author says it's the most difficult platform to achieve rapid growth. I don't think this is always true. Um, I, I, there is kind of a slow burn with a lot of people when they're generating things like educational content. But if you jump into something like kids entertainment, which my colleagues have done, uh, you can achieve phenomenal overnight success uh, if you get lucky or if you do a good job of following trends. Uh, if you are able to supply content in a high demand area where there isn't a lot of competition, then you can you can go viral and be an overnight success. Uh, so it really depends. But as a general rule, uh, perhaps it is more of a slow burn process. Another key thing that's a bit unique when it comes to YouTube is that long content does well. Uh, you can put out videos that are an hour plus in length, but something like that on Facebook, people probably aren't going to pay much attention uh, for very long. Okay, so let's talk about the ways that people discover content. The first is viral sharing, which rarely happens with YouTube. Uh, sharing is just not a huge part of how YouTube operates. Uh, the second way people discover content is through search. So this is going to be optimizing for things like keywords and topics that are trending. Another channel is going to be through other people's content. So people that are talking about you on, on their channels. 
And then arguably the, the most common or the most important is going to be the algorithm is creating content that is the algorithm is going to favor and it's going to favor content that has high click-through rates and high retention rates so creating good content people like and then the youtube algorithm is going to start pushing it out to other people uh and you can learn more details about how that works with the youtube formula book which i also summarize in a video okay some more advice we have some advice from chris williams who oversaw sixty thousand plus channels on youtube and what he recommends is a combination of the following as the best way to grow. First is paid media. So running things like YouTube ads. I'm running YouTube ads right now for one of the biggest YouTube channels. I'm running, uh, I did a whole month doing YouTube advertising tests for my own courses. Uh, you combine that with collaboration. So collaborating with channels that are already very successful, the influencers, et cetera. And then you do optimizations and you also organize things into playlists. So you can see that I did that here. I have a playlist talking just about social media advertising. I have another playlist where I'm just talking about becoming famous and I've, I've organized my channel into these playlists so that it's not just a chaotic mess of random videos that I'm publishing. Another key thing that you might want to consider is doing giveaways, giving away things like an iPad. This might give you a little more of a viral edge if you're able to pull that off. Another key thing, uh, perhaps, one person suggests is one of the most important aspects of YouTube channel is having a strong point of view. A good example of this is YouTuber I follow, uh, Nomad Capitalist, and they keep talking about going where you're treated best. That's their strong point of view is that you should migrate to whatever country or countries uh, are going to treat you best in terms of low taxes, in terms of more freedom, etc. Now, this quotation might come as a surprise, but we have tons of empirical evidence to back this up. What you want to do is you want to be the same, but different. And this, this is a quotation from Phil Ranta. So what are we talking about here? Well, okay, what happens when you're different? When you come up with a product, a piece of content, a video that's just so unique, uh, what you end up doing is alienating most people because what most people want is stuff they're already familiar with. You, they want to hear the things they've already heard before. They want things that are consistent with opinions they already hold. They, they want to watch videos where the hero wins, the villains defeat it. There's predictable patterns. They want love stories where the two people end up together at the end and they get really upset if they don't. So that's what we mean by being the same. And in, when we're talking about something like YouTube, for example, it's going to mean you're going to have makeup tutorials. You're going to put out a gaming video. You're going to put out the kinds of stuff that there's high demand for. But what does being different mean? Being different doesn't mean being fundamentally different. It means being distinctive. It means you're the guy with the bright red glasses and the bald head or the person that wears the purple tie or the person that has an Irish accent or you have some sort of thing that makes you more memorable even if your content really is it's substantially different from what's already out there the things that already have high demand now what i also recommend is you check out the book by byron sharp called how brands go and grow and he goes through a huge argument about why differentiation is not really good what you really want to be is distinctive and there's a difference there distinctiveness is more of a superficial thing your colors are different, your logo's different, your personal brand looks different, whereas differentiation is you're, you're fundamentally a different, unique thing. You don't actually want to be unique, you want to be distinctive as a general rule. And this, this is going to come a surprise, as a surprise to a lot of people who had formal marketing training at top business schools like I did, where we're taught uh, strong, bold positioning, unique place in the market. Not really the best strategy, especially if you want to have massive market appeal. Okay, so what does that specifically mean? It means putting out makeup tutorials, being in the gaming space, or being in the family kid space. These are three dominant demand categories on YouTube. And I, I can tell you, you can achieve incredibly high viewership in the family kids niche. The book talks about this, the 1 million followers book. I've seen it personally myself. I've seen overnight success with people that have, have operated in this space and have generated millions and millions of views this way and tons and tons of full-time revenue from from advertising by by operating in this space specifically uh, but of course you can do the same doing one of these niches if that's uh, where you fit